best stories and sports. This is an E60 feature presentation. There ain't never been a ball game that I wasn't hot. From Little League all the way until the Boston Red Sox, and I had told him I wasn't going out there without it. Pinch him out some more. With two out in the tenth. Game six of the 1986 World Series. Little roller up along first. Behind the back. It gets through Buckner. Here comes Knight, and the Mets win it. That moment drove Boston fans to desperation. But to Red Sox right-hander Dennis Oil Can Boyd, it was for redemption. Boyd had lost Game 3 to the New York Mets. Now he was scheduled to start in Game 7 the next night at Shea Stadium. You beat me once, I beat you the next time. Nobody's ever beat me twice. Not the same team. No. And wasn't no ego thing, man. Said, damn that, I'm the best pitcher here. But Game 7 was rained out. With an extra day off, Red Sox manager John McNamara named lefty Bruce Hurst, who had beaten the Mets twice in the World Series, as his starting pitcher. Boyd was the odd man out. Did you make an argument to McNamara when I he told you? I ain't talked to him since. I mean, I love Bruce Hurst to death, but nobody can outpitch me. I'm sorry. And then when John McNamara would tell me that I'm not pitching, I ran right down the street, walked right to the crack house. What was it that just drove you right to walk to the, to the uh, crack house? Right I was there? already uh, at it. And I'll never forget, I was dressed really, really nice and had a lot of gold on. And he said, man, you got a lot of nerve. I said, I damn sure do got a lot of nerve. Um, I, this is what I need, and you, you don't, you don't want to with me. I was very angry at the time and could have probably got myself in some real trouble. Boyd now admits he used cocaine throughout the World Series, including when he pitched. In Game 7, Boyd never made an appearance, and the Mets won the World Series. Got it! I had said to myself that if I wasn't pitching by the sixth inning of the ball game, I wouldn't pitch. And didn't care if we won or lost. When I came into baseball, I was already a mad, mean, angry black person. For 10 seasons, mostly in the 1980s, Dennis Oil Can Boyd won 78 games with a career best of 16 and 10 in 1986. It was a time in Major League Baseball when other stars battled cocaine addiction. What did separate Boyd from the crowd was his nickname, the extent of his drug use, and his compulsive, volatile personality. If you were to meet Jackie Robinson in another life, what would you say to him? Why'd you do this? I don't really think that Negro League Baseball should have been broken up. How come? Because it was, it was individuality. I'm not real thankful to Jackie at all because I'm me. My style of baseball, the way I played it in the Major League, transpired from the Negro Leagues. So that's why people found that I was a hot dog. Or I was flamboyant. Boyd was born in 1959 in Meridian, Mississippi, a fiercely segregated town near the Alabama border. In a bus station, one of the bus attendants snatched me by the back of my collar. And he said, little nigga boy, you can't drink from there. And at the same time, my mom came over and told him to get his hands off of me. And he slapped my mom. So, uh, I got to get hold for a second. So, um, uh, And you were about six years old. Yeah. I'm in the first grade. First grade. Boyd's mother stayed home to raise Dennis and his siblings and was an alcoholic. His father was a former Negro League player and operated his own landscaping business. When I was about 14 years old, and one man that my dad was working for called him a boy 
in front of his kids, in front of his boys. And uh, from that day on, I started thinking if my dad wasn't a man, when was I going to be one? So it made me be very aggressive toward anyone that would demean me in any kind of way, even if it was belittling in the smallest sense. As a young child, Boyd loved Sandlot and Little League Baseball. Boyd says he was introduced to alcohol at the age of seven. A friend dubbed him Oil Can for his prowess in drinking whiskey stored in oil cans. We would sit back in my backyard and we would play as kids growing up and this is where we would go and drink this at and smoke cigarettes. I've smoked pot my whole life. There ain't never been a ball game that I wasn't high off of marijuana from Little League all the way through college. Despite his drug use, Boyd excelled on the diamond, earning a baseball scholarship to Jackson State. Boyd says he sometimes pitched intoxicated while in college. In 1980, he was drafted by the Red Sox at the age of 20. The following year, Boyd says that while playing winter ball, he tried cocaine. My first experience was in pro ball in Columbia, South America. And we were some ball players down there sent to play baseball. And we run into it. And it ran into us. When we started doing it, it was supposed to have been the coolest shit in the world to do. And it was introduced to us as that. He was called up by the Red Sox at the end of the 1982 season. Boyd says his cocaine habit increased. He established himself with 12 win and 15 win seasons in 1984 and 85. At the end of 85, he says, he used cocaine on the day he got married. Yeah, I almost missed the win. Uh, I almost missed it. I almost missed it. Uh, came to hide in hell at the wedding. Um, when the wedding was over with, I was gone. I ain't eat no cake, I ain't eat nothing. I was gone. During spring training in 1986, Boyd says a drug dealer who he had just met introduced him to crack cocaine. I said, what the hell am I supposed to do with that? He said, you smoke it. I said, you smoke it? What are you talking about? You smoke it. I, said, oh, I thought it was powder. I thought I was just going to chop it up and just snort it up. But snorting cocaine and smoking cocaine was two different things. The first part of my career, I snorted cocaine. Then I found out about how to smoke cocaine. And that's when things changed. That was during every damn day of the 86 season. Boyd says his crack addiction made him lose 40 pounds in the early months of the 1986 season. He says he was using it every major league park, including May 11th, when Boyd was the starter in Oakland against the A's. I can remember going and locking myself up in the bathroom and smoking some dope right there at the ballpark. And I had it under the bib of my cap inside the crease inside of your cap. And when I was warming up in the ball game, uh, third, fourth in, uh, it fell off my head. And uh, and you would launch into your delivery. Yeah, too. I jumped at the plate, you know, and had to fly off every other pitch. I pick it up, put it on. So it's one time, you know, I'm so into what I'm doing, I done forgot that the dope is under my hat. So I look on the ground. And I'm like, damn, there's little rocks everywhere, man. So I play it off as I'm walking back. I pick it up like I'm fucking dead. Picking up, mashing it into the ground like I'm doing, but yeah, doing the ball game. Boyd says that during the 1986 season, his teammates knew of his drug use. He says he would periodically speak of his drug habit with team doctor and minority owner, Arthur Pappas. I would come into the ballpark and he would call me in the back and he asked me how you felt. And I would tell him, you know, did you do something last night? And I was honest with him, yes I did. Why do you think they didn't drug test you? Because I was honest about what I was doing and told him to leave me alone and I'll be all right. I learned to deal with it myself because not one time I've ever played baseball I had ever pissed in a cup.
Not one time. I've never been tested in no form or no fashion. With benefit of 2020 hindsight, how do you wish they would have handled your situation? I can't really say. I'm killing myself. But they love my ability and my talent. So they condoned it. After the Red Sox lost the 86 World Series, Boyd's career was never the same. He played for a couple of different teams and retired in 1991. He's had a share of off the field issues since retirement, including an indictment in 2005 by federal authorities for threatening a woman he had an affair with. The charges were later dismissed. That a boy, that's where you reach back and pop it. Today, the father of two lives in East Providence, Rhode Island, with his wife of 26 years. He earns a modest living by signing autographs. You're gonna be a ball player, man. Give me some. Bobby, come on, come on. Making appearances for the Red Sox and coaching kids. Go, big kick, pivot, flame. Atta, baby. This year, Boyd completed his autobiography titled They Call Me Oil Can, Baseball, Drugs, and Life on the Edge, due out in June. He says he finally grew comfortable with telling his life story and says he still smokes marijuana every day and still occasionally uses cocaine. Who is Oil Can Boyd? Man, that's good. Man, that's good. Right now, I have a good soul. I, I didn't for a while. It was a torn soul. So, I feel good. And uh, I feel like the last chapter of my life is going to be better than the first one.